Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting some yellow hollyhocks, beautiful old-fashioned tall country garden flowers. Um, I'm going to be starting off with a, a very pale, um, softly diffused background which I'm going to paint wet in wet. Um, I'm wetting my paper all over with my large harky brush but any large brush will do that will give you a nice give your paper a nice soaking so that it's nice and wet. Now I'm taking my large squirrel mop and I'm going to mix up some gamboge which is a lovely rich clean transparent yellow and I'm going to drop it across my page roughly where I think I want my hollyhocks to be. The paint will diffuse and run because my board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees, but that's the effect that I'm looking for, so some very soft diffusion. This is ultramarine blue, and I want to drop in enough blue across the top to softly diffuse into the yellow to give the look of a pale summer sky behind the hollyhocks. I'm just looking for a softly diffused background and I'm now mixing together the two colours to produce a green, a very soft light green which I'm putting across the bottom and then just adding in a bit more blue just to strengthen up the blue across the top. At this stage you can of course tip and tilt your wash around as much as you like until it looks the way you want it to look. I'm cleaning around the edge of my tape to make sure I don't get any runbacks from any pools of water. I'm now going to lay my board flat and mix up a fairly rich but quite loose inky consistency of the gamboge on my small bristle brush. This I'm just going to flick or spatter across the middle to strengthen up the yellow marks that I want there. Because the paper is cotton, it's still nice and damp, so those drops of paint will softly spread out and diffuse. Um, and there you see how they look now. I've got a nice soft diffusion which is a really going to be a really good base for my hollyhocks. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely. It's completely dry and you can see that I have lightly penciled in some sort of very rough circular shapes around my areas of yellow paint and those are going to form the basis of my loose hollyhocks. I've also drawn some vertical lines of varying angles to represent the stems and I will be painting leaves and little unopened hollyhock buds all the way up those stems. But firstly I want to start working on enhancing those yellow areas. So I'm taking some lemon yellow and some gamboge and my small calligraphy brush and I'm mixing up a well pigmented but quite um, wet mixture of those colours and I'm painting over my hollyhocks. I'm dipping into the two different yellows trying to build up some slight subtle changes between the rich, darker, more golden gamboge and the cooler lemony yellow. I'm keeping the gamboge towards the edges, the bottom and the outside for that sort of darker, richer shade. I'm trying to keep it a bit paler in the middle so that I can do some more detail in the center of my flowers to get them looking more like hollyhocks a bit later. Every now and again, I'm dipping my brush into the water and softening out the edges, blurring them off in places so that I've got soft and hard edges for my flowers and keeping the edges looking a little bit ragged, a little bit uneven. 
I don't mind if I paint outside of my pencil lines. My pencil lines are just guides. I'm trying to work quite quickly across this left side, all the flowers on this side, joining some of the flowers up so that I've got nice lost and found edges to keep the loose look of the flowers across the bottom especially. I'm trying to work quickly because I'm creating a wet in wet environment within the flowers and I want to drop in a bit more detail a bit later on, as I say, into the middle of the flowers, the flower centres. Keeping on swapping between the lemon yellow, the gamboge and the clean water. Slowly building up layers, the paint softly diffuses and catches and, and looks a little bit harder around the edges as the pa paper begins to dry a little bit. With slightly less diffusion and with thicker paint it'll stay there. softening back around those edges there and now I'm going to mix up some of the yellow the gamboge and the lemon yellow with the ultramarine blue into a, a, a palish green not too dark and I'm dotting it carefully into the middle of my flowers which are still damp so there will be a bit of diffusion of the green I'm trying to leave a sort of uh, a paler mark in the in the middle um, to look like I think it's not sure it's the stamens of the flowers the flower center I'm sorry I'm not very good at knowing the biological terms but it's a distinctive um, central part of the flower which I'm trying to capture with this green trying to leave the very middle areas unpainted but keeping it loose and fresh as well so I'm trying not to get too bogged down with detail I'm just trying to suggest that detail and now while the flower the little green detail is still damp I'm mixing up a darker richer green and I'm going to drop that in around the bases of some of those the flowers so that I get some sort of some shadow and some variation to the green and now that I've got the green with my small calligraphy brush I'm going to start to draw in the stems the leaves and the unopened buds Hollyhocks are very tall flowers, um, very distinctive. They come in a whole range of beautiful colours. Of course, you could use this method for painting them in, in any colour. They'd look beautiful um, to have a sort of a, a lovely array of, of all different shades of pink, things like that. But I think these yellow, ho yellow hollyhocks are quite subtle and, and quite lovely. And it makes a nice... I think a simple painting because we're just using blue and two types of yellow to mix all our colours so it keeps things nice and simple and nice and fresh while we're learning um, to paint flowers. I'm painting in more of my stems and my leaves and what I'm doing is just painting sort of marks around and over the stems using my calligraphy brush I'm not painting the shapes of leaves or buds as such I'm sort of roughly getting in the sort of leafish shapes and small round dots that could represent the buds that are running and growing up the stems but what I'm trying to do is just make marks that when looked at all together suggest the rest of the flower. I'm 
I'm adding more yellow or more blue to my green so that I can change up this mid-tone a bit, have it darker in some areas and slightly paler in others. I'm not worried about my darks, so I'll put them in later when, when the whole painting is more or less finished, when I've got all my flowers, leaves, stems and buds in place. And every now and again, I'll add water to my brush and just soften out some of those green areas into larger leaves or sort of more blurry suggestions of flowers and leaves in the background. And continue working, painting around the flowers that I've already got so that the leaves behind some of the flowers will help to push the, the flowers forward sort of wanting the flowers in this uh, left hand area to become the focal point. So I'm trying to pay particular attention to their shapes and the way the leaves grow around them. And I think I forgot to say at the beginning, but I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed 100% cotton paper. It's a lovely paper. This is 90 pounds weight and I use it because it's it's much cheaper than 140 pounds. It's a little bit harder to use in that it buckles or crockles a little bit more than the heavier weight papers. So for beginners especially I would recommend that you um, use 140 pound or the 300 gram weight papers um, which are, will be a lot easier to paint on. My tape that I use is ordinary decorators masking tape and I find it works perfectly to tape the unstretched paper onto my board and as the paper gets wet it expands and will buckle slightly but as it dries um, it'll flatten out nicely. I think I prefer cotton paper and would recommend it uh, because the, the paint behaves in a different way on cotton paper. It diffuses much more beautifully and it's actually much easier to paint on. I find it, most people that I know find it much harder to get results on the cheaper pulp papers. So even though the cotton paper is more expensive to start with, um, I think you'll have much more success with cotton paper. So it works out to be cheaper in the long run. So I'm carrying on working across the painting. I need to start building up the right side of the painting now. Blocking in more of the hollyhocks using the lemon yellow and the gamboge and the water to get these nice soft shapes and then going back to the green, adding more stems. This time I'm going to have some leaning through across towards the right. And less flowers and less stems on the right so that that sky colour can be seen between the flowers. So I think this is going to be my last stem brought up at this slightly deeper angle. And then it's a matter of painting leaves and buds again. My paper is quarter imperial size, so that's a about 11 inches by 15 inches or in metric 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters.
And next, in the same way as I did for the first batch of flowers, I'm dropping in some green into the wet centres of the flowers to produce those um, nice details in the middle that actually really give the flowers a lot of um, suggested form and dimension, if you know what I mean. Keeping it very, very loose and scribbly. Most of what's here is very loose and scribbly, but I'm hoping that it all comes together to give the impression of these lovely hollyhocks. Just realised I've forgotten to paint in a flower, so I'm going to put, a, put that one in there. It looks a bit bright at the moment, but it should dry back a bit, a little bit paler. Just a few more leaves, thicker across the bottom of the painting, or denser. Less leaves and more buds above the flowers, or smaller leaves along with the buds. I think that will do for all those mid-tones. It's now mostly dry and so I'm going to start off in the bottom left corner and mix up a very rich, thick mixture and still of inky consistency but nice and dark with lots of, of ultramarine blue along with the gamboge and lemon yellow. And I'm now going to spend a while picking out the areas around the bottom in particular that I want to be dark. So I'm using the negative painting technique to paint around my flowers to create the illusion of lots of foliage and leaves below the flowers and behind them and also all the shadows as well. I want this painting to be nice and fresh. If you wanted to, you could get some really nice darks in here with um, something like a Payne's Grey or something like that. But I'm quite enjoying just using the, t the three colours here, the two yellows and the blue mixed together in different uh, ratios to create my darks. As I paint in my darks, I'm also adding more yellow occasionally to brighten it up or dipping into water to soften certain edges back so that I'm still keeping those kind of lost and found edges, the hard and soft edges as well, which can all contribute towards um, the kind of loose look of the painting. Again, softening back here and there with clean water and then dropping in more of that green paint, going back into darker, richer mixtures to highlight flowers and create a little bit of separation in some of those groups of flowers. I think this method of painting flowers could be used for all sorts of different um, varieties and types of flowers. I think just the important thing is to look at the shape, the distinctive way in which the, the flowers that you're painting grow. For example, with these hollyhocks, they're very long, tall flowers um, where the blooms are quite large and they um, they open around the stems at the base first um, with many many smaller buds 
reaching right up to the top of the stems that then begin to open up as time goes on. Whereas with something like roses, um, you would paint more of a sort of a, a bush shape or something like that, if you know what I mean. You'd have a different shape to the way that you'd paint your blooms, your leaves and your stems. But you could transfer this method into painting different types of flowers. So I'm taking my time now um, using the wet paint on the dry painting. I'm in no hurry. There's no sort of limits or time limits on this. So I can keep stopping and looking back and maybe walking away, coming back and looking with fresh eyes just to make sure that I'm getting my darks in the right place, but without overdoing it. I think, as I said earlier on, I want to keep this painting nice and fresh and light for the most part, just with enough contrast, hopefully, mostly around the base of the plants. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding sort of fairly random streaks and dashes and flicks of paint here and there with the dark paint. And this is just to kind of, to break up and break across those um, softly diffused shapes with a little bit more dark and detail, but without painting it in as detail, it's just some, some loose bits of something and nothing like you know, extra stems or tendrils or, or leaves or bits of shadow or grass growing up through, that sort of thing. They're just little accents of dark, I think. Breaking away from the shapes that I've painted, I think just adds a little bit of something to it at the end. I need a bit more dark under a few of the, the flowers just to emphasize them, adding in a sort of hint of a leaf here or there, a bit of shadow somewhere else maybe. Also probably need to brighten up a few more of the flowers with maybe some bit more, bit more of, the, of the yellow here and there just to brighten them up, darkening a few of the stems and increasing the shadow around the base. few more sort of random flicks. And I think that's that's just about it. I think I'm going to call it a day and call this one finished now. So it's time to remove the tape and to peel it off carefully, pulling it away from the painting and to have a look and see how it looks with that nice white border, my favourite moment. I've never painted hollyhocks before or these sorts of flowers and I'm very, very pleased with the outcome. Um, using this very simple, loose method, sort of wet in wet, soft and hard edges, lost and found edges, um, has really worked well to produce this kind of, I think, quite a convincing painting of these 
lovely old-fashioned flowers. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, please like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon. Take care, have a great week, and happy painting. Bye.